Welcome to Great Eccleston for the BTPA second championship round. We've got some great weather, the sun is shining, we've got a lot of tractors here, we're in for a great day's pulling. The Great Eccleston Show is the Northwest's largest country and agricultural show and for many years has hosted the Northwest Tractor Pullers Club's first pull of the season. This year brought to you in association with Malpass Tractors. Situated near Blackpool, Lancashire, this is the third round of the BTPA Championship and takes place just two weeks after the Kirk Bride Show that we saw last time. The weather is absolutely perfect and we have all the BTPA classes competing this weekend. For some it's the third round of the year. One of those is the very hotly contested Limited Pro Stock class with the two top teams tied on one win and one second finish apiece. Your machine's running really well, we saw you at Kirkbride two weekends ago and the RPM you're getting out of this machine is tremendous. Yeah, we had a bit of an over rev issue at Kirkbride, we dropped a valve on it, smashed the piston all to pieces and smashed the head to pieces and we also had a brand new set of injectors sent over from Holland and it destroyed one of them which was a bit disheartening but we got it lucky turned around in two weeks. We've also done some changing ratios in the back end, try and keep the revs a bit more at bay now, rather than killing it. <laughs> yeah. But this this British Championship uh, limited pro stock class is, is really, you, you can't tell who's going to win before you set off. There's, there's four or five that could be on the top step, isn't there? Yeah, it's a very tough class now. I mean, I guess years ago it was sort of a lot smaller, sort of grown over the years, and it's got tougher and tougher. And if you don't keep moving, you get left behind, so you've got to keep pushing. So the True Blue and the Bomber, it's all to play for. Absolutely. Uh, a win each, two seconds each, so it's all to play for today, see who comes out in front today is in the lead for the championship, yeah. The, the, the limited pro stock class is the one to watch, you can, you, we don't know who's going to win, there's, there's four to pick from, isn't there? Yeah, there's a few good tractors up at the top there now, and uh, you, you, it's, it's uh, any one of three or four, yeah, it's, it's uh, pretty close, good to watch, yeah. So the scene is set, the crowd are ready and the track is in perfect condition. It's time to bring out the first competitor in the limited pro stock class. This will be our test puller, the going bust machine of Michael Winterbottom and Rob Flaherty. If the tractor looks familiar, that's because it used to be driven by Stephen Ainsworth back when it used to have plastic fish in the little tank by the air intake. Well, this is the second event for the new owners and they'll gradually be getting to grips with the setting up and driving a machine like this. So let's see what they can manage today. Well, they've got the green flag and they're off. Well, they are getting used to it. This is going really well. And finally pulled up at 73.69 metres. It's been decided that the sledge is not set properly yet, so they'll have to come out and do it all again shortly. This weekend, we're pulling over a distance of 100 metres. Second test puller is going to be Petty Cash, driven by John Litchfield. It's the first outing of the year for this team. The aim of the test pull is to get the weight setting in the sledge just right for the class, so that plenty of tractors get full pulls and progress to the pull-off, but not to make it too easy for all the teams. Each different class produces different amounts of power, with different track conditions as well. It's quite complicated to get that sledge set just right. White to decent pull in the end, a distance of 69.69. Obviously not the full pull they were after, but as test puller they have the option of dropping this one and coming out again later. But the sledge is now set, which means that we're in competition and the next machine out is one of the favourites, True Blue. Currently in first place, but still getting to grips with a brand new chassis set up this year. Well, this looks like a masterclass in tractor pulling all the way through to almost the end of the track. Registering a full pull, the actual measured distance, 108.37 metres. Next doubt is Chris Brown with Dark Addiction. Tom spoke with Chris at the last event. You've had a year or two of teething problems, but the last few runs I've seen it, it's been looking good. Yeah, we're getting all right now. We, we had a boosting problem last year, as everyone probably saw. Um, seem to have got to the bottom of that now. Um, unfortunately, we snapped the cam in breaking. Uh, we've got that sorted now, so hopefully this weekend we'll put some metres on someone. 
And it's a tough class, isn't it? The, the limited pro stock class. There's lots of top boys in there. They've been doing it a while. But, but you're getting some good advice of some good people. Yeah, it's a really good class now. Yeah, a lot of people, a lot of a lot of tough competition in this class now, and everyone's really helpful with you. So, yeah, see what we can do this time. So, are there troubles behind them? Well, a bit up and down, but he's getting some meters behind him. It's going to be very close to a full pool. Oh, but just coming up short with a distance of 98.76 metres for Dark Addiction. Well, a few nice flames there, and Chris looking quite pleased with that performance. Rightly so. Chain reaction out next, driven by Graham Ward. Graham finished in eighth position last season, but to be fair, didn't compete at every round. He's boosting and he's off and moving. Well, he's making some distance. There he is, pulled down by the sledge. Smoke coming from absolutely everywhere under the bonnet. And finally stopped at a distance of 97.03. Five more tractors left to pull, plus the test puller, if they elect to come back out again. And this is Red Mist, driven by Stuart Noblet. Sixth place last year, so we'll be looking to improve on that and see what he can do. Lifting the front wheels almost straight away. Oh, and pulled over to the right very strongly. And he's out of bounds. That's instant disqualification. In the replay, you can see he turned to the right almost immediately and just couldn't get it pulled back far enough. By then, it was too late and he crossed the white line and it looks like he's even damaged a bit of the sledge. Another of the favourites out now. This is the Lancashire Bomber, driven by Chris Wilkinson. Chris finished in second place last year. He's been competing for quite a few years now. The machine's getting a little bit stronger each season, so he really would like to take that number one spot this year. Sounding strong. Oh, and he's off to a flying start. Far more speed than a lot of the other guys today and going right up there. Yes, it's a full pull and beyond 105.15 metres is the measured distance for Chris. And that does mean that we now have a pull-off situation with Chris joining True Blue. Well, plenty of applause and Chris looking very happy with that one. Next out is Midnight Express, driven by Matt Trow. Carefully backing up to the sledge. And positioning the tractor how he wants it on track. Well, a green flag on track from Ed, so let's see what he can do. Seems to have nice balance. Putting in some distance now. Yeah, this is looking really good. And finally dragged down by the sledge at 97.82 metres. Not quite enough for a spot in the pull-off, but a good pull all the same. Mark Jones now with Will It Make It? He's hoping that the answer to that will be yes. He's being backed up by Stephen Ainsworth there. The boost is up nicely. He's away nice and smooth. Oh, but a bit of a bounce there. He's driven through it. He's really moving. This is looking to be like another full pull. Yes, and a tiny bit to spare. 101.96, and that's three into the pull-off now. The final competitor out is going to be Ed Bateman with Major Madness.
Ooh, a bit of a stutter there. Well, he's given up on it, but because he hasn't passed the 30 meter flag, he can be pulled back and have a second attempt. Maybe choosing a different gear ratio. So there we go, that engine sounds so sweet and strong. Well, this is looking much better this time, into a bit of a bounce, but controlling it nicely. He's well into that track now, bit of fluid. But he's going all the way to the full pool line, so that's four into the pull-off. And we still have our test puller to go again. And here is the going bust machine. If you remember, they achieved 73.69 first time out. Now that's a shame, no improvement this time. 45.82, so no pull off for them. The final man out is John Litchfield with Petty Cash, looking to put in a test port before the sledge is reset for the pull off. And they must be wishing they use these settings for their competition pull because they're flying all the way to a full pull line, easily beating the 69.69 earlier distance. So that gives us our results after the first pulls and four machines make it through to the pull-off. More weight will be added to the sledge to make it harder to pull. It's all right, yeah, it's same for everybody, but we're st that's still the one to beat. But you've shown him that he hasn't got plain sailing. Oh, no, no, there's a few tractors here, though, as you can see, you know. Every tractor that's in pull-off, it, it deserves to be there. And, and these others that just missed it, they're, they're all snapping at the tails now. The track to me looked quite heavy for some of them, but you obviously got down there. It's obviously a bit wet because they put a lot of water in because it's a very dry weekend. Any changes for the pull off? No, just leave it as it is, I think, and let it go. Yeah, we, we had a better run than some. Some got a bit of a bounce on at the start, but no, we'll uh, we'll just go with what we've got and see what happens. Yeah, no, we had a bit of issue to begin with. Just I think I'm I'm, I'm doing it for years. It's a bit rookie, and me still just trying to get the uh, get the hang of it again. But we'll try to pull back, wind her up a bit more, get the boost in there. I've changed the gearing on it, we've changed a lot of engine bits, new fuel system on it, new manifolds, there's a lot of, a lot of changes and it's like which, which is causing the problem sort of thing, we've got to, got to try and find the, find the issues. And the first machine out is going to be True Blue, driven by Ross Forrest. The tractors come out in the same order as they did for the first round of pulling, but now they've been on track once they know what to expect settings wise. And he's coupled up. Feeding in that boost. Well, he's really flying now. Wow. And 94.44 meters. That will be a tough target to beat for the rest of them. Chris Wilkinson up next on the Lancashire Bomber. Don't forget, whoever wins this round takes the lead in the championship for limited pro stock. All guns blazing then. Lots of revs and lots of wheel speed. Oh, it's a good strong run, is it enough? Well, he's pulled down at 92.09. That's good enough for second place at the moment, but no win today for Chris. Well, the third tractor out will be Will It Make It, driven by Mark Jones. Down goes the visor. Take the strain. Build the revs. Build the boost. An almost perfect start there. It's another good ball. Oh, but he's being dragged down just a bit short of the others. 86.04, that's third place at the moment. And the final machine then is Ed Bateman with Major Madness. He's good to go. Bit of a slower start than the others. 
Oh, no, it's not looking so good for him at all. Just 48.67 for Ed. So the final result sees the win go to True Blue and Ross Forrest, which puts them in the lead in the points, Chris Wilkinson taking second place. So the competition is really hotting up in this limited pro stock class. He managed to take the win, but Chris Wilkie's still second, so it's still all to play for. Uh, yeah, it's closer than we'd like, but you know, it keeps it interesting and uh, keeps it fun for everybody. So a quick look at the points so far. So moving into pro stocks now, we've got a great class here this afternoon at Great Eccleston and they've come in from far and wide. There was a big event over in the Netherlands last night and there's a few competitors trucking back through the night to be with us. We had a major blow up from John Eccles on Simply Red two weekends ago at Kurt Bride and we thought that would be the end of him. We thought that would be his season over and to, to our surprise he was here yesterday building the boost pressure, testing and tuning so hopefully he can do some good things here in the pro stock class here at Great Eccleston. So as we wait for the final pro stocks to arrive at the track, we're moving into the light modifieds. And a change of driver this time for On The Limit. Of course we do a motorsport, but Ellie's also got a horse. And five weeks ago she come off a horse, broke a collarbone, so that's put Dad back in the seat. Yeah, so that's the story behind that one. Well, I know you did get down the track at Kurt Bride, but there seemed to be a bit of a niggling problem there. So what was the problem? We saw you trying to get started before the pull-offs. Yeah, no, we just had a problem with the back motor with one of the magneto boxes. Uh, it just, it, it run on tick over, but then as soon as you brewed it up over tick over, she, she was misfiring. And so we should, decided to shut it off, find the fault. Um, and then on the Sunday we come out with it, but we got a bad bounce on with it. so. Yeah, we decided to shut off and bring it here and, and uh, yeah, just have a think, if you know what I mean. So into the light modified class, 2.5 tonne is the weight limit for these tractors, generally powered by two supercharged V8 motors. First out is going to be Mark Pacey driving on the limit. No need to build boost with a supercharged machine, it's just plant the accelerator and go. Getting a bit of a bounce on there. <laughs> and it gets pulled down short of a full pull at 79.66. Mark, of course, is the test puller, so he does get the option to come out again and have a second attempt if he wishes. And he doesn't look particularly delighted with that one. Second tractor out is Dan Whittingham with Aftermath. This machine won the first round two weeks ago at Kirk Bride. Again, two supercharged V8s, but with a different physical layout. Here we go. Look at that wheel speed. A bit bouncy, but he's putting in some distance here. Woohoo! And that is a full pull for Aftermath and probably a bit of a headache for him after that run. That's about 4,000 horsepower from those two engines. What a beast! Third machine out is going to be Ian Shirley driving the night. This machine is creeping up in distance ways on Aftermath, so they'll be looking for the full pull here. Rises down. And he's off, plenty of wheel speed, perfect balance there, no bounce. This is looking so much smoother than Aftermath. And yes, that's our second full pull, so we have a pull-off situation. And in replay then, looking nice and smooth. And the team no doubt thinking, yes, we can take this win. 
Will Mark Pacey be looking to come out for a second attempt to beat the 79 metres first pull? Well, they're trying to get the machine started, but having problems. There's a strict time limit after the track marshal waves them onto the track. So Still trying to sort something out, out there. Mark's back onto the tractor now. Get the starter strapped on. But no, time's up. There will be no second attempt for on the limit. So while we wait for the machines to cool off enough to stage the pull-off, we've got a demonstration from the 950 kilogram mini modified class. This is reloaded. Just a single supercharged V8 this time, but on a much lighter sledge and just as exciting. These machines need quick reactions to keep them on the straight and narrow, something like a thousand horsepower on tap. Woohoo! Wow, these really are mean little beasts. And next out is the crazy looking, but always pleasing, legend and hero. And you've been burning the midnight oil, haven't you? Yeah, we've, um, after Burn A, we went to Burn A a, little, uh, a few weeks ago. We had a big backfire on the engine, so we've had quite a lot of work to do. The heads have been in Holland, having some machining done, some parts from America. Um, Yesterday morning, there was no supercharger on it or anything. There was no ignition, um, nothing in the cylinder head. So we had quite a bit of work. Yesterday, dinner time, we fired it up, run it, um, but then it wouldn't move. So we had to have all the clutch back out of it and check it and clean it. So yeah, there's been a few late nights, but we're, we're here. Well, there's a whole lot of machines like this with a huge range of body styles competing in Europe, although this is the only UK-based machine at the present. Shame, I'd love to see a few more. A real crowd favourite and so excited to watch with the lightweight balance giving the wheels up action from the start to the finish. Just check this out. Beautiful. Well, back to pro stock, and it looks like the Ice Bear team have made it to the track, and that's John Eccles warming up. A great win last time, and we thought you were not going to be here, but you finally made it. Yeah, well, we have to do these things now and again, don't we? You happy with the, when the machine's going this year, then? Uh, not too bad. There's some improvements yet to be done, so we're just playing. Quite stressful driving back from competing last night and then competing today. How did you get on last night? Uh, we were uh, we tried something different in the Euro Cup. We were ninth, which uh, again still a uh, very good result in the competition that we're in. But um, yeah, we'll see. We're a little bit tired. We've driven all night, so uh, good to be here at Eccleston, though, of course. We're just about to move into the pull-off for the 2.5 ton light modified class. First out on track is Aftermath, driven by Dan Whittingham. Heavier sledge set in now. Ooh, looks like unburned fuel coming out from the left hand bank there. Problems for the right hand one as well. But he still gets a distance of 103.12, so that's the bar set very high for the night to beat. Replay shows the great balance for the pool, but hopefully not too much damage done at the end of that run. Well, second tractor out is the night, driven by Ian Shirley. 103.12 is the distance to beat. So being backed up there by Helen. And we sometimes see her behind the wheel. Well, what can we do? Good wheel speed. Good start. It's all looking good so far. And he's been dragged down earlier than Aftermath. And yes, 95.59 the final distance, so that gives him second place with the win going to Dan Whittingham. But a very good effort there from the night. That's two events and two wins now for Dan, so looking very good for the team. 
Dan taking the win here on the light modified class. Unfortunately, you suffered a breakage, so we couldn't see you in the modified class. But does you in good stead for the points for the light modifiers, isn't it? Yeah, no, it gives us that edge now in the points, um, which is always good. Uh, two wins uh, in the points round, so we're happy with that. Like you say, it's just a bit of a shame about the breakage, so we couldn't come back and run in the heavy mods and put a show on for the crowd, which is a bit of a shame. But Well, this is the 3.5 tonne modified class, Snoopy 3, driven by Josh Whittingham. Snoopy 3, your machine's been sort of rock solid. The old workhorse of the team, it just turns up, goes and pulls and does really well. You've been having a lot of teething problems with, with the Snoopy 4, haven't you? Yeah, it's that's the idea really. We want to do all the work on this one and make sure that one goes to make the numbers up all the time. We'll keep that one going, but then you you go out with that one and it gets close and you think, well, if I just turn that up as well, so... So, two tractors in the Snoopy team. This is Snoopy 3, the older of the two, which competes in the 3.5 tonne modified class. Twin V12s powering this machine, so a very different sound. Of course, it's a very nice full ball there to take the win. A bit of a cough at the end there. The Aftermath team had planned to bolt two extra V8s onto the tractor and compete in this class, but as we heard, they had an oil leak so couldn't make it. A great shame as they have had some great results competing in Europe with that configuration. Moving up in weight now even more to the 4.5 ton heavy modified class and this is the newer of the two Snoopy machines. Snoopy 4 driven by Kevin Whittingham. A rather different intake configuration and something in the region of 9,000 horsepower on tap. It's still very much getting the machine set up. A very heavy sledge setting for this pull but still putting in a perfect, nice full pull. Well, the upcoming August event here will see both Snoopies competing against Europe's best in the Mitas Euro Cup Finals for the heavy modified class. So this really is a last chance to test for the team. So before we move into the Pro Stock class, it's time for our first look of the year at the 4.5 tonne Super Sport class. This is another RPM limited class, but it allows far more in terms of turbo and other modifications. The tractor to beat for quite a few years has been the Orange Factory, driven by Jamie Fleming. And they've again won the first round at Kirkbride just a couple of weeks ago. We're picking them up in the pull-off, and that was Orange Factory making a distance of 90.24 metres. Second machine in the pull-off is Brutus, driven by Stephen Charles. Ooh, he's looking to be having problems at half-track. 56.73, which means Orange Factory wins its second round of the year. Well, there are the points in Super Sport. So, moving into Pro Stock now and a look at the point situation so far. Third place at Kirkbride and we have a new machine as well here this weekend from, from your team. So, you've got it all to do today. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, three tractors now, three dragons out this weekend. So, yeah, real good. Uh, really pleased with it uh, at uh, Kirkbride though, really pleased with that. If you'd have said at the beginning of the weekend, would you take third? Yes, probably. I haven't got as much horsepower as some of the other guys. And, uh, yeah, very pleased with that. That's right. I was struggling for grip on those pull-offs. Uh, the sec, the track, the second day was was really, really different. We uh, really struggled to get into the track. I quickly put a weight back and wish I'd have put two, but that's hindsight. It's a wonderful thing in tractor pulling. Um, and some of the other guys struggled for grip as well. Um, but I just got pipped for second, for second place uh, into third. But uh, yeah, Mike did well too uh, to to get the grip and just to manage to get that full pull. So. And great to see a good pull in yesterday's test session for Alex Reary. Happy days, very happy. It's been a long time, it's been two and a half years since we've been down that end of the track. Uh, not quite sure what the right formula is, so we're not going to change it too much for today. Uh, we might add some more fuel because we thought the smoke was a bit white or a bit light, yeah. Seven machines entered for this round and it has to be said that with the inconsistencies we've seen so far, any one of these could take the win on the day. 
First out is Ted Nicholson with Rough Justice as our test puller. Ted has been one of the top machines for many years, though they had a hiccup last season and also at the first round at Kirkbride this year. So they're really looking to get back on target today. Well, they're off. Ooh, that nose may be a bit on the high side there. Ooh, that final drop was too much there. Oof. And the front wheels go flying. Well, that was, in fact, a full pull, and luckily it's been confirmed that the sledge is set, so that distance will stand. But can they get that machine fixed up in time for the pull-off? We shall see. That was a big landing. Whoa. Time to get the welder out. That must have been quite an impact loading on the axle. Second machine out is Panic, driven by Paul Haylock. The tractor is newly imported into the country from the United States, and at his first outing at Kirkbride, Paul really was just setting it up, though he did get a good test run in at the end of the event. Well, all set. And this is going very nicely. Looks like it's got plenty of potential. up just short of a full pull today at 92.22 but definitely moving in the right direction John Eccles with Simply Red next up it looks like that late night spanner in has got the job done after that horrendous blow up at Kirk Bride wow it's sounding super strong here And it looks like he's getting there. Good, steady progress. But again, just short of the full pull. 94.96 is the distance, but he'll be glad just to have got down the track after the last event. Well, a very popular driver here is John because he lives just a few miles down the road. This is his local pool. So Ice Bear out now, driven by Mike Simmons. As we heard, they were competing in Europe yesterday and have driven through the night to be here for this event. What a tremendous effort and a very strong machine, this one. Winning the previous round at Kirkbride, remember? And they are flying down the track this time. Look at him go. Yes, a full pull for Ice Bear. Well done, Mike. That was so good. We're going to have to see it again from head on view. Well, nowhere near the front lift that Rough Justice had. Balanced just perfectly for the full pull. And another Veltra machine. This is Diesel Dragon, driven by Gareth Jones. This tractor has been improving over the last few rounds, but have they got the consistency? In comes the boost. Look at that wheel speed. Well, it's looking very strong. Again, very well balanced. And yes, that's another full pull, so that's three in two to pull off so far. That's something slightly different now. Still diesel powered, but this time it's a V8 machine. It's the big boy's toy driven by Simon Neem. The team had a horrendous blow up a year ago, but have got it sorted out. It was truly on song in the previous round at Kirkbride. Eyes is down, green flag out, boost is a building. What's their wheel speed like? Yeah, that's pretty healthy too. This is looking good. They're flying down the track. Ooh, bit of a flame there. 
But that's another full pull, which makes four into the pull-off, with one more to pull, and that's Piston Broke, driven by Alex Reary. Well, they've had lots of problems over the last year, but at yesterday's test session, they managed to get down to the end of the track, so they're hoping for good things today. The wheels are up high, and he's taking a very scenic route and pulled up at 85.72. Well, as you can see in the replay, Alex had a real struggle to keep that machine straight. He didn't cross the boundary line, so this pull counts. So we'll look at the results after the first pull for the Pro Stocks, and we have four tractors in the pull-off. So while the tractors are given time to cool down, a head-to-head -head demo competition from something rather different. Two French tractors, which are very much based on the Pro Stock specification, are running methanol fuel instead of diesel. So you'll see no black smoke from these. This is Guy de Huff with a Warrior. Wow, sounding strong. Look at that wheel speed. Oh, this is a beautiful run. It's a storming full pool, looking a bit bouncy in the replay. You'll get to see it. But nevertheless, getting the job done. Just a couple of light touches, though. And the tractor staying straight, and it's the sledge that's all over the place. That was an amazing demonstration. And the second tractor is Nick de Hoof with Froggy. Methanol powered pro stock style again. Look at this. That, folks, is how it should be done. Another storm in full pool. And in replay, looking a lot smoother than Warrior. So both machines will be out later again for their pull-off. Back to the Pro Stocks and the first tractor out for the pull-off is Rough Justice. They obviously got the front wheels welded back in position again, but are being towed onto track to reduce the load on them, I'm guessing. So here we go. Well, no loss of confidence. Well, it looks like they're going for it. It's a storming pool, waiting for the measurement from the tower to confirm. Yes, 90.12, that's the distance to beat. Well, a quick bit of track regrading and a very happy looking Ted Nicholson. Next out is Ice Bear, driven by Mike Simmons. Being backed into position by Andy Miller. Down goes the visor. Up comes the boost. And he's flying from the get go. Looking for 90 meters plus, remember here. Oh, it's looking good. Oh no, just short. 89.12 meters. Well, the second Veltra machine then. It's going to be Diesel Dragon, driven by Gareth Jones. Again, another flying start. All the tractors in this pull-off are doing so well. It's going to be close. Oh, pulled short just there at 82.85. So that's good for third position at the moment with Ice Bear holding on to that second place. Got a chance to see it. It was looking so good. And a whoop. And the final machine is Big Boy's Toy, driven by Simon Neem. Well, a lot of nose weight on this one. 
Always being moved around the track. Lots of fluids and smoke. Well, finally pulled down at 75.28, so fourth place for the team on the day, with the win going to Ted Nicholson with rough justice. Not the result they would have been expecting after the wheels literally fell off the wagon earlier on, but they're going to be very happy. Speaking of which, so's everybody here at the Great Eccleston Show. Blister in sunshine, blister in shoulders, and smiles all round. Well done, Ted. Ted, another win, another sunny day at Great Eccleston. Yeah, well pleased, Tom. Say, uh, we had the wheel fall off in the first round. Luckily, we were test puller and had a bit of time and managed to get her back together. And yeah, she seems to be running ever so well again. It was only a metre between you and Ice Bear, so really close still. That it's You can't tell who's going to win until we get to the day, can we? That's it. it it's anybody's now. Say, so one bounce and it can all go, all go the other way. Say, so today was our day. Tomorrow will probably be theirs. Yeah, the champion is still, still alive, isn't it? So we'll see what happens next time. That's it. Say, we had a bit of a setback at Kirkbride, so we've got it all to try and do, but we'll, uh, we'll do our best. So there's confirmation of the results on the day. And as we look at the results, it's clear that this is going to be a very close and competitive class all year. That win is enough to move Rofe Justice into second place, but Ice Bear holding on to the lead at the moment. But before we move into our final pull-off, a quick look at a few of the other classes competing. This is the 950kg Mini Modified B Class. We saw the A-Class tractor reloaded earlier, but these are more the entry level and generally without superchargers. They're relatively lightweight and can be difficult to handle. This is Nigel Waring with the Gambler. And the win, as so often the case, going ultimately to Mark Barnes with a very bouncy run from him in All or Nothing. Very entertaining class to watch. We saw Gareth Jones competing in Pro Stock earlier. Well, this is his daughter, Olivia, competing with the Garden class. And coming second, the win ultimately going to Caitlin White. A great entry level class for all the youngsters, this one. Another tractor from the Jones team. This is their brand new compact diesel driven by Nathan. Not just for the youngsters, this class though. These tractors are powered by turbocharged car engines. They can be a real handful. This is Mark Halliday with the compact douche. Pulling that sledge all over the track. And the class winner with an aptly named Stampede. And that is, of course, Anthony Barnes. So back to the pull-off for the new limited superstock class with Guy de Huff. It's Warrior first to take to the track. Sounding so strong here. This tractor is running on methanol, remember? Great balanced run. Distance of 90.88, so that's the distance for Froggy to try and beat. Froggy then, driven by Nick de Huff. And all these machines showing very clearly that it's wheel speed that's important to really get them moving rather than slowly slogging down the track. Oh, and he's looking even stronger here. Wow, a storming run, almost to the end of the track. 119.3 metres and a very happy Nick. Well, we'll see this tractor out once more before the end of the day, but with somebody rather different driving. In the meantime, it's time for a demo pull from the full super stock Red Fever, driven by Jeff Ashcroft. Something of the order of 4,000 horsepower for these machines, three stages of turbocharger, methanol power, and a very heavy sledge setting. 
Jeff competes throughout the season right across Europe in the ETPC Metis Euro Cup. And while he's not in actual competition today, he's certainly getting useful data ready for the upcoming Euro Cup finals back here in August. And we're only just keeping the machine in bounds there. Full distance, 82.12 metres. So to close the show, a final outing for Froggy, but this time driven by a rookie, Jade Howarth, who's often seen trackside taking photographs and is very heavily involved in the tractor pulling scene. It must be a nerve wracking sitting on top of 4,000 horsepower for the first time. Well, Jade gave it a real go for a distance of 86.93. She certainly won't be forgetting that ride for a long time. Well done, Jade. So that brings us to the end of a very warm and very successful event here at Great Eccleston, brought to you by the NWTPC with backing from Malpass. Two rounds completed for some classes, three for others, and we're getting well into the season now. The next event is here at Great Eccleston in August, a big three-day event that not only includes BTPA tractor pulling, but also Metis Euro Cup action for three of the ETPC's European classes. We'll have some of Europe's best pro stocks, light modified and heavy modified machines competing here under the floodlights. So join us then. And this is just a little preview of some of the action that we're going to be enjoying from that event. We'll see you next time. <laughs>